Hello everyone. In today's presentation, uh, this will be the continuation of the present previous presentation on early childhood caries. And in this one, we'll discuss the clinical features and stages of early childhood caries. Our main objectives will be to know about the clinical features and classification and to elaborate on the different stages of early childhood caries. Caries in infants and young children. Uh, although it uh, sounds redundant, let's revise this once. Caries in infants and young children has long been recognized as a clinical syndrome, described by Belterami in 1930s as less dense noir de two petites, which means black teeth of the very young. First is perhaps the most preeminent in this perspective for defining the term nursing bottle mouth. Subsequently, other terms such as baby bottle tooth decay, nursing bottle syndrome, bottle mouth caries, nursing caries, and facio-lingual pattern of decay have also been used to describe this condition. Early childhood caries was given by Davies in 1998. And it is recently called as maternally derived streptococcus mutants disease 2. And the AAPD definition, let's revise it quick. The presence of one or more decayed, missing or filled tooth surfaces in any primary tooth in a child 71 months of age or younger. Clinical features of the early childhood caries include It is characteristic and pathognomic of the condition. It affects primary dentition in a sequence. As we can see in this figure, the maxillary central incisor cervical region, lateral incisor and canine cervical region. This is the initial stages of the early childhood caries. And the lesion can be arrested by the application of fluoride and improved oral health habits if diagnosed at this stage of early childhood caries. And if it advances further, it requires restorative treatment or extraction. And the sequence in the early childhood caries are maxillary central incisors, then to the laterals, maxillary first molars, then the canine and second molars, and then only mandibular molars at the latter stage. And mandibular anteriors are spared because of the protective action of the saliva and because the tongue protects the mandibular anteriors from the acidogenic fluid. In the maxillary central incisors, facial, lingual, mesial and distal surfaces. In the molars, facial, lingual, occlusal and palatal surfaces. These are involved. This is the exact sequence how the early childhood caries progresses. Classification of early childhood caries when age classified early childhood caries into following types. Type 1 is mild to moderate, type 2 moderate to severe and type 3 is the severe. Type 1. It is the type of ECC in which only the molars and the incisors are involved and it is seen in 2 to 5 years of age. The cause is usually a combination of cardiogenic semi-solid or solid food and lack of oral hygiene. Number of affected teeth usually increases as the cardiogenic challenge persists. Type 2 is the little bit more advanced labiolingual carious lesion affecting the maxillary incisors with or without molar caries. There can be molar caries or ca there may not be. And it is seen soon after the first tooth erupts. And mandibular incisors, as you can see in the picture, these are unaffected by the caries. Cause is usually inappropriate use of feeding bottle. It will breastfeeding and poor oral hygiene. Unless controlled, it may proceed to an advanced stage. And the most severe form of early childhood caries is this type 3. It includes all the teeth 
including the mandibular incisors. Mandibular incisors are the spared one, they are the least affected, but in this type 3 early childhood caries, these are also affected and it is usually seen in children of 3 to 5 years of age. Cause is combination of factors and poor oral hygiene. And it is very rampant in nature, that means it is very fast growing and it involves immune tooth surfaces too. Harrison Garcia Goyo in 1999 gave one classification that includes very mild, mild, moderate and severe. White line surface spots are seen along the gum line of incisors. This is very mild form, mildest form and if proper oral hygiene is maintained and topical fluoride is applied at this level, this can be arrested. And in mild, demineralization of gingival third of tooth and moderate cavitation. Brown cavitation is seen in the cervical region. Frank cavitation and multiple tooth surfaces can be seen in the moderate stage and if it progresses to severe, widespread destruction of tooth and partial and complete loss of clinical crown. We have no other option than pulpectomy or extraction. This is hopeless condition. In progression of uh, lesion, initially a demineralized dull white area is seen along the gum line and labial aspect of maxillary incisors. Maxillary incisors, that's quite important. Lesion like this will appear. And these white lesions become cavities which involve the neck of the tooth in ring-like manner. Like this, involve whole of the tooth in a ring-like manner. Finally, whole crown of incisors is destroyed, leaving behind brown black root stumps, like this. So, our main aim is to diagnose early as possible, as early as possible and provide the prompt treatment. Stages. Stage 1 is initial, 2 damaged, stage 3 deep lesions and stage 4 is traumatic. Stage 1 initial reversible stage at 10 to 18 months. Cervical and occasionally interproximal areas of chalky white demineralization and at this stage there is no pain. So you shouldn't expect that child will complain of the pain and then diagnosis can be made. No. Stage 2 is damaged stage. Damaged carriers stage is 18 to 24 months. And lesion is seen in maxillary anterior region only. It may spread to dentin and so aloes discoloration. And whenever the child is having cold foods like ice cream or cold drinks, the pain can be felt. Stage 3 is the deep lesion is 24 to 36 months. That is 2 to 3 years. Molars are also affected, frequent complaint of pain, and pulpal involvement of maxillary incisors. Here in the picture we can see there is a gingival sinus discharge too because of this maxillary central incisor. And stage 4 is the traumatic stage is 3 to 4 years, 36 to 48 months. Weak tooth that small force can fracture them. Parents may report history of trauma, molars associated with pulpal problems. We can see even the first and second molar are involved. Maxillary incisors become non vital. They must be non vital because the stage has already progressed so much. So what will be the consequences on the child? Dental pain affecting regular activities like eating, talking, sleeping and playing, setbacks in speech articulation, risks of developing caries in permanent dentition. Okay, Because it is habitual, oral hygiene is a habit, so that has to be built since a very early childhood. Decreased appetite causing malnutrition. Okay, You can see very lean and thin children because whenever they have any food, they suffer from pain. Psychological trauma from dental procedures and taunting by siblings and peers may lead to poor self-esteem. That is also quite important. The psychological and emotional development would be affected. So what we can do? Audius diagnosis results in the best prognosis. So 
whenever you see any cervical region you need to educate your parents the parents can diagnose themselves at their homes and excavation of active caries and caries control restoration with GIC should be done whenever we diagnose the early childhood caries and if pulpal exposure has already occurred pulpectomy followed by restoration is the best treatment because pulpectomy treated deciduous tooth are the best space maintainers okay rather than extracting and putting on space maintainers pulpectomized primary tooth are the best space maintainers these are our references for today's presentation and thanks for your concentration if any questions comments and suggestions are there feel free to comment below